Okay, hello YouTube. Um, today we're going to be talking about a different way that you can approach the Queen's Gambit declined with the black pieces after d4, d5, c4, e6, knight to c3, uh, knight to f6. We're going to have uh, bishop g5, bishop e7, knight f3, castles, e3, and this is going to be kind of our main stemming off point right here. So if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. So what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at one of the three main options that you can play uh, from this position. Now from this position, the three kind of main options are you can play some kind of Tartakauer with b6. Now usually when we play the Tartakauer or the Lasker, we will play the move h6 first. So we'll play h6 and then when the bishop retreats, we'll play b6 for our Tartakauer or we'll play knight e4 for our Lasker variation. Now the other way that you can approach this is you can play what's known as the orthodox variation. Now the orthodox variation involves either the move knight on b to d7 right here or the move pawn to c6. Now when you play the move knight on b to d7 you're still kind of leaving open the possibility of playing the move pawn to c6 but this move is by no means obligatory and that brings me to kind of the topic of this video which is kind of this alternative to playing a normal orthodox system you can play this idea called the Henenberger variation which has been one of my favorite variations for years and years long before i even knew what it was called um so after rook to c1 you would play uh, you could play this move pawn to a6 but i'm going to give you another way that you can play uh the ideas in the Henenberger other than pawn to a6 because the Henenberger itself was a very good idea and back when this opening was very popular uh, among people that had the black pieces on the black side of the Queen's Gambit declined like you know players like Alexander Alekhine and uh, Capablanca talked about the Henenberger variation it was this is when it started getting some traction like back in their day was they would play the move pawn to a6 and really the main idea was is they were waiting for you know white to play something like um really something like bishop d3 and if white played something like bishop d3 and lost the tempo which is you know like a terrible move uh we would take it and then we would expand with something like b5 and you know bishop b7 and then we would follow up with c5 the queen could come to b6 and actually these positions would end up being you know slight advantage black you know black has a little bit more space on the queen side once we play c5 we've equalized in the middle of the board if we can exchange the c pawn for the d pawn a lot of times black will actually end up being slightly better in these positions so this is kind of the thing that attracted me to the Henenberger variation um, when I first started studying it, it was a way to avoid kind of the boring orthodox setups um, where, you know, you play c6 and then your your main hope is that you're going to exchange and then you're going to hunker down and maybe you'll equalize in the center later and, you know, maybe white will have some sort of advantage. Uh, the Hennenberger is doing the opposite. It's threatening to break out on the queen side with dc4 and b5. Now, the problem with playing a6 is just kind of like your initial move. So if you start the Henenberger with a6, one of the issues you have is that it is very possible for white to play c5. And they're going to make you play sort of like, a, we'll just say like a non henenberger esque type position. You're not going to be able to play your expansion on the queen side. You're not going to be able to kick a bishop that obviously isn't there. Uh, but these positions are actually supposed to be okay for black. Like black can continue with pawn to c6. Uh, we can have bishop to d3, and then we're going to play pawn to e5 pretty much immediately. So the idea here is you just get in this e5 move pretty much as quickly as possible. Uh, now, for example, we would have something like, let's say d takes e5, we could simply play uh, knight e8. And after this exchange, like say bishop e7, queen e7, we are getting that pawn back on e5, and we should actually be in really good shape. This was actually played between uh, Topolov and Nielsen in Dortmund in 2005, and it ended in a draw for black. Uh, Nielsen actually did pretty good. Uh, so just a few more moves we have to defend against the threat on h7, and then the pawn gets recaptured. Uh, a few more pawns get exchanged, and as you can see, we have a completely symmetrical pawn structure without a whole lot going on. And this wasn't enough for Topolov to do anything against a guy that he was higher rated uh, than by like about 100 points. So Topolov wasn't able to win this with white. Uh, the position's just too symmetrical and there's just not enough there. So this is 
definitely something um, that is playable even today. You can play the Hennenberger variation. Actually, um, Magnus Carlsen uh, recently had a game that kind of got essayed in the Hennenberger variation. That game continued Queen C2. We had D takes C4. This is actually uh, Ronian versus Carlsen uh, played back in 2013. So I guess not recently, recently, like, you know, close to 10 years ago, like nine years ago. So we have DC4, Bishop C4, and he plays kind of the typical Hennenberger type idea. We're going to expand. We're going to play C5, Bishop D2, B5. So he does it in that order, but same idea. A4, B4, Knight E4. We're going to play C takes D4, Knight takes F6, and a bunch of stuff gets traded. Bishop B7, he finishes development. And, you know, at this point, he's pretty much equalized. He's gotten all his development done, and... Uh, it turned out to be an equal game. This was played between Aroni and Carlsen. Aroni and then Carlsen in Norway in 2013. And that game ended in a draw, but I'll just show you the rest of it. Uh, we have knight c6. We have a few exchanges happen. Some more exchanges happen. A whole lot of exchanges happen. Here, white, we could say maybe white's a little bit better, you know, because he's got the bishop pair. But it turned out just not to be quite enough uh, for, for anything. And actually, white exchanged off and... Now we have opposite colored bishops, and now the position is pretty much completely dead, but we can play a little bit. Actually, Carlson's playing for a win now. He could just exchange and just shake hands, but he played a few more moves. Rook c2, and again, we could just exchange and shake hands, but instead they repeat moves this way. Black just refuses to exchange rooks and instead repeats moves, and then they shake hands and draw as agreed. Black could have just as easily exchanged the rooks, and the opposite colored bishop endgame is also completely drawn. So there just isn't very much there. So those are some of the, the recent examples of, of people trying the Hennenberger. But there is this, this alternative, and I, I've been kind of getting around to this for this whole video. I wanted to talk about this alternative. One of the things I don't like about the old Hennenberger move order with a6 is they can kind of prevent you from playing what you want to play, which is this expansion on the queen side. Uh, this move, d capture c4 right here, is actually a perfectly acceptable way to get to the same ideas that you would get to out of the Hennenberger. As it turns out, the tempo really isn't that important. Like, you do not need to wait for another move from white. You don't need to wait for queen c2. You don't need to wait for a bishop move. You can go ahead and just take on c4. And the whole point is you're going to play a6 and you're just going to threaten to play b5. Now, really, the only thing that we have to worry about is if they can play a move like pawn to a4 here and prevent us from our normal type of expansion. So if they can play a move like pawn to a4 and prevent pawn to b5, we would be in some sort of trouble here. As it turns out, this isn't a whole lot to be worried about. Um, after something like pawn to a4, we're just going to play something simple. We're going to play pawn to c5. And what we're going to do is we're going to isolate this pawn. We're going to develop this bishop, this knight to b6. We're going to develop this bishop to d7 and to c6. And the position really isn't all that complicated. Actually, black is doing pretty good here. Black should be considered at least equal after a4 and c5. Black has kind of a normal type of isolated queen pawn position, whereas knights are able to occupy the squares that blockade the d4 pawn, and you're still able to develop that bishop on c8 to d7 and c6, and you're actually able to anchor that bishop to the c6 square and white will usually play like knight e5 and take the bishop on c6, but then you end up with a pawn on c6 and you still have your isolated d pawn. So black is doing pretty good in these positions. So the move that people will actually typically play is they won't even try to play a4. They'll just play something like bishop d3. And then you can, again, you can play c5 or you can play d5. It doesn't make, make much difference, but c5 is the main move. c5 after bishop b3, you know, preempting b5 with bishop d3 is just another way to go. If they did something lackadaisical, like if they castled, um, you could get the full expansion. So like if they castled, if they played castles kingside, you could actually just get the full expansion here that you would get out of the normal Hennenberger. You could play like b5, bishop b7, and then follow up with, with c5. Uh, this is definitely more than playable. So we're gonna have uh, bishop d3, c5, castles, takes, takes, and then b5, and we're just simply going to expand with bishop b7, and we've completely kind of equalized here. And actually, black ended up doing a little bit better than equalizing here. Uh, this was uh, Lottier versus Gatakomsky, uh played in Monte Carlo back in 1996, and uh, Gatakomsky actually went on to win with the black pieces. 
So after rook e1, rook c8, uh, knight c3, h6, he managed to start improving his position once a few exchanges happen. And these types of things just happen in these types of positions. Black is actually doing a little bit better than it might appear. He's got slightly better piece placement than white does typically. And it just, the positions usually are a lot better than they look. So black is actually just doing pretty well here. Uh, Kamsky managed to improve his position and eventually he went on and got the full point. Notice here he's got the past A pawn, and it's a very dangerous pawn. We have to deal with this. And he's also got this F pawn that he just won, so now he's up two pawns. <laughs> and the position's a problem, uh, and uh, Latia wasn't able to hold it from here. So Kamsky went on to grind out this end game, and uh, he actually won the game. So this is, again, this is the main idea here, is you play dc4, bishop c4, a6, and you play these Hennenberg ideas with you know, pawn to c5, getting the isolated pawn, uh, the queenside expansion with b5, bishop b7, c5, all this is on the table still. Uh, a4, you're going to play c5, you're going to isolate that pawn, and then you're going to play knight b6, bring your bishop to d7 to c6, etc. And you're going to improve your position this way. But this is called the Hannenberger variation. Um, this might not be called the Hannenberger variation. I don't know if it has a name. But it's the same idea as the Hennenberger variation. Maybe we could call it like a delayed Hennenberger, or uh, it wouldn't be delayed. It would be an immediate Hennenberger. <laughs> so, but it's very similar. It's the same idea as the Hennenberger, which would normally begin uh, with the move pawn to a6. And it's a good alternative if you don't want to play a boring orthodox variation, but you want to play something different than the Lasker or the Tartico. Uh, so anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Uh, thank you very much for watching.